Hello everybody and welcome to the 32nd episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show that's vaguely about queer culture and relationships. Today's episode is about the holidays. We are joined by a recurring guest, our first recurring guest, I think, what? Ooh, yes. Cassidy Anhorn. Uh, you can follow Cassidy on Instagram where she posts about upcoming stand-up gigs and takes pictures of her dog. I'm also joined by my lovely co-host, Robert, who's vaguely here. Who's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, this is the first I've had somebody in the same room just doing this podcast mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. Um, it's weird. It's an honor to be the first reoccurring guest. I feel very yeah, chosen. Yeah. I feel very affirmed. I feel very special. <laughs> It's good stuff. Um, as we get started, remember there's video of the podcast on the BitButton YouTube channel and audio wherever you get podcasts. So, the holidays. Well, first, let's just check in. Let's just, like, relax. Mm. Robert, how's it going? How's London? Uh, good. I had a very London-y day. So, uh, day off today. So, I slept in a bit after a fairly late night last night. Uh, and then I went out to see a matinee play. It was get this, it was like a modern gothic uh, take on Macbeth. So the, we okay. like walked away from this play and the things that we knew were like the vast majority of the budget was pleather, smoke <laughs> machines, and hair gel. Because like, it, it, mm. like imagine Blade Runner meets um, Mad Max meets um, The Godfather mashed together into a Macbeth play. Uh, it was very, cool. like, gritty, keep... dark, swords were used, you know, that sort of stuff. Nice. Did they yeah. keep the Shakespeare script and everything? It was just, like... Yeah, same script, same dialogue, same Shakespearean, like, uh, what is it, pentameter. And um, so saw that. It was it was fairly good. It wasn't amazing. It, it needed some work, but it was, it was like, kind of a smaller theater. Uh, but it was good, and there were some very good actors in it. And then uh, after, went to Covenant Garden, which is like a big sort of shopping outdoor space. And it was like covered in Christmas lights and there was a giant tree. And there was also this like, I guess a partnership with Disney. So they're doing this frozen theme and there was like frozen ice sculptures, like actual ice sculptures shaped like the characters from Frozen and then other like frozen decorations and things like that. I refuse pretty. to watch Frozen. You've never <laughs> seen either of them? There's more than one. Yeah, there's two. No, I we need to make another like Christmas movie. Like we we need to move on. Yeah, we need to move on from Frozen. Is it <laughs> maybe make a even third a Christmas one movie? Thawed. I think it's just like wintery. I was at um a restaurant last night in like Richmond, and they were playing Let It Go, and it was like a bar, like a sports bar. <laughs> what? I don't and like I that. didn't understand <laughs> who it was for. Yeah, no one. It was for it was absolutely no one. <laughs> it means yeah, no I was one talking was to watching you. the playlist on that speaker system. Yeah, they let the playlist go. Yeah, or uh, it was like uh, a very curated and just like curated wrong. Yeah. yeah. Cause like the, um, I was talking to one of the people I work with, I work in the animation industry and he was like, Frozen is an outlier. It's so weird that it's like a, such a global phenomenon because like the mo for the most part, the most successful shows are about dogs. He was like, you can count it mm -hmm. like generationally. Mm -hmm. There's just mm -hmm. going to be a dog show that takes over the world. So right mm -hmm. now it's Paw Patrol. He said before <laughs> it was. No, Robert, you probably Clifford, know. Clifford, the big red. Well, yeah, Clifford was huge. Yeah. So even before that, the one that had like really sad eyes, like kind of droopy eyes. Oh, droopy dog. You know Purge, the, that one? What did Robert Well, there was say? droopy dog. He was Dro part of uh, No, Vera. not droopy dog. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I, I looked it up. Like cat dog. Not yeah. cat That's cat like dog our generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love how it was when he's like uh, referencing like older generations, like, hey, Robert. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you remember this one in black and white? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I will have to, I'll have to get back to but you. But it's true, like, I, and you're talking TV series, but I think in terms of movies, like, there's been so many, like, famous dog and or animal ones. Like, I still remember Milo and Otis. That was huge. Old Yeller. You know, like, those kind of movies were massive. Yeah, we love the dog movies. I watched uh, Marley and Me on an airplane and just like fucking cried yeah, my eyes like out, scary. and I made the people around me like so uncomfortable. What was the mm. best? But it was one of those one? airplanes. Oh, Airbud. Airbud. Air yep. And then Air Buddies. 
Yeah. Wasn't there like seven of them? Like there's a whole bunch. Yeah. yeah. They played other sports too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they covered all the bases. I'll watch all of the Air Bud movies, but I will not watch Frozen once. <laughs> mm. That's where I'm at. <laughs> That's where you're at. Okay, okay, wait. So what is it about Frozen? Is it just overhyped? Um, it's overhyped and I just like when it came out, I don't know, I was like, it's not for me. I'm like an adult. But apparently that didn't stop everyone else. Yeah. I don't know. I don't need to see that little freaky snowman. No, oh, I don't like him. I think he's was ugly. Very yeah. underutilized in the first one. In the second one they had a better <laughs> use of him. Yeah. yeah. Really came of age in the second one. It's true. Uh, Cassidy, it's true. how are you? How's your fall season going? Uh, oh, I'm good. My fall season is going well. I actually also saw a play last night <gasps> in a theater. Oh. I know. I was going to ask, like, what? what's the last play you've seen? Yeah, but that seemed too niche. <laughs> nope, not niche enough. Uh, last night. So I went, I was in Richmond and then I went to some theater that was like in that area. I, I don't know what it was called. And I saw The Odd Couple. Okay, um... yeah. Which... This is on me, but I did not know what it was. It was because yeah. my girlfriend's uncle was starring in the play. Oh, so wow. we went to watch it. And they were really good. Like, the acting was really good. Um, I was the youngest person in the theater by, like, 30 years. Yeah. Hands sweet. down. And then they wouldn't let us drink in the theater. So I had to, like, during intermission, literally Ugh. chug, like, the fullest glass of white wine, which felt really bad. But then <laughs> Sasha, my girlfriend, didn't want to chug her. So she snuck the wine glass in her purse and, like, brought it down. <laughs> That's good. It, it was pretty, it was good. Um, yeah. Did they allow any beverages in that? Room? Yeah, you could have, like, okay. water or juice. Weird. But why can I drink an apple juice, but I can't have a glass of wine? Yeah, that's so weird. I'm and it's not like there were kids there. No, no kids are gonna watch the yeah. odd couple. Yeah, because yeah. if always it was like by that, when I go to see theater and the like age demographic is always like fifty plus, the majority is always like white haired, elderly, probably mm -hmm. white, not always. And I'm just like, I worry, like, in 10 to 20 years, is live theater just going to be populated with art students and skeletons? Like, what? Uh-uh. I think it depends on the play, because this play was, like, old-timey, and it was yeah. extremely misogynistic. Mm. And it was, like, no one realized. Or, like, we know, but it's like, but it was of that time. And also, like, it wasn't gay at all, but there were so many moments where it seemed like it was going to get really gay. But then it didn't, and I was like, I need to rewrite this. But, like, every time they're, like, having a heated argument, they just, like, hook up. <laughs> just kind of redo it. Yeah. And in the beginning, they're all you. playing... You drive me crazy. Yeah. You drive me crazy. Uh, take off your pants. <laughs> and in the beginning, they're playing poker, and I was like, okay, but, like, what if they're all playing strip poker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. It would actually be really good if they made it gay. Could you be, so like, you'll, a consultant you'll for the theater on, industry, off, off, off Broadway. Where you just no, like, I'm gonna go write it. I'm gonna just you, like sexualize plays. Like, okay, I love yes. that you're doing Shakespeare, but what okay, if everybody so frozen, was Okay, so Frozen, but make it a little sexier. <laughs> <laughs> the primary relationship is between sisters and Frozen. We're not gonna start another episode with oh, incest no. jokes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, they meet. They meet two other sisters. You said they mate. <laughs> they, no, that was, yeah, that was like a Freudian, it's a bit Freudian. slip. <laughs> It's fine. We can move away from Frozen. We can move away from Frozen. Um, sweet. I Well, so it depends on the culture of the town that you're in, too, like whether they support the theater. Mm -hmm. Because, like, we visited New York a while back, and, like, the demographic in the theater was great. It was just, like, all over the place. Like, any kind of person was watching theater. I was like, oh, ideal yeah. <laughs> culture. That's good. Yeah. Um, so the holidays... <laughs> Should we get into it? Let's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start positive. Um, we have plenty of... We, I'm sure we have a lot to say. Um, <laughs> but we're going to talk about favorite holiday memories, least favorite, and uh, just like, just muse on the holidays through this episode. So I'm going to throw to Robert first. What is a favorite holiday memory? We're talking Christmas, end of year season. Christmas. Definitely for me. So a, a good thing that my family did with around the holidays is there was like certain traditional things that we did, certain like rituals. And one would be is the waiting on the stairs to come down for Christmas. So like everyone's bedrooms were upstairs and then the like living room where the tree was was downstairs. And you 
weren't allowed to come until everything was ready. So like we had to be in our pajamas, lined up from oldest to youngest on the stairs. Like it was very like Von Trapp family. Um, mm-hmm. And we had to sit there and so you could hear everything being made. Like you could smell breakfast being made. You could hear the sounds of the dishes. You could see the light just coming around the corner from the tree. And you knew that there was more light because it was kind of sparkly. So you knew that there was gifts there too that weren't there before. Uh, and the dogs were running around. You're like, why are the dogs getting you to go around? But it was just like, it was a really, really was a nice thing because you look forward to it and it built anticipation. And it was almost like the magic, you know, before the crazy. Because then you kind of get into the gifts and you get into all the eating and everything. So it's sort of like savoring the moment. And so that that was really big for me with the waiting on the stairs. Cool. You have two siblings, right? Yeah. Okay, so it was the three of you. Wait, are parents. you youngest, oldest, middle? Youngest. Me too. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. You know it's usually <laughs> the third kid who's the gay one. Yeah. Oh, Did, I'm have the we talked about that? Kid. You're the second kid. But still gay. But still gay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, supposedly the more like the younger you are and the more well, yeah, obviously the more siblings you have, like the more likely you are to be gay. Yeah, I've heard that somewhere. Why? I heard this, I haven't I heard this cited stat that, was because you find your siblings born. attractive. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I heard that it's um, I don't know. That's I don't know why. Thirty-three percent more likely than the last to be gay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Let's neither of us cite where we've heard this and just yeah, spread I the information. I mean, like, I want to believe that because cool, but mm-hmm. I know. It's just I weird. don't know. Does it's it work for weird. like just just like male gay? No, what just about? like queer kids. Siblings hmm. and okay, we're getting a queerness. We're getting oh, a citation. Yeah. Watch out for. We're gonna debunk this right here, right now. Oh god! Oh no! These are really intense headlines. Oh, no. Nope. We'll do a follow up episode. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's a just stay tuned. on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about you, Cassidy? What's a favorite holiday memory or tradition? Oh, uh, my family's pretty low key for christmas like we just get together the four of us typically so mom dad me older sister two straight mm-hmm. and for well she wishes she weren't because mm-hmm. she thinks men are trash but mm-hmm. she is <laughs> yeah. she is begrudgingly heterosexual mm-hmm. yeah. um but yeah we just have it low-key like christmas eve is always more fun because people come over my mom cooks a nice dinner and then like we watch a movie usually we used to watch it's a wonderful life but then i think we all realized that that movie is like so boring yeah not to shit on that classic but like i can only watch it so many times before i'm like it's so boring yeah yeah, Heard all yeah the lines. it doesn't have the same like momentum to it as like elf for uh, yeah oh my god yeah i love elf and i love like yeah. the jim carrey the grinch like that's probably yeah. my favorite um, last oh, really holiday. i didn't like i well elf's okay i did not like the jim carrey grinch it was not a fan. what no why it's so I, good i just mm-mm, it was not for me <laughs> It's yeah. everything for me. I also um I watched Last Holiday for the first time What's with Sasha. It's Queen it. Latifah's. Oh, and oh, Sasha and I were like, why haven't one. we seen this yet? And then we watched it. It's actually so good. And I fully cried during it. Nice. Fully mm. cried. So Is I would Queen Latifah the main. Yeah. Player? She thinks That's she's cool. I mean, I don't know to spoil it, it's so old. <laughs> um, but she has a terminal illness, quote unquote. Okay. So she like blows all her money and goes to like some european country and lives like a millionaire and just has a really great time because she's like it's my last holiday yeah oh. but then hilarity and emotion ensues and love and romance and christmas i actually would recommend that one though Is oh i need to watch it i i've, I've wanted to romance? i've seen a lot of the yeah. holiday but not last holiday oh yeah i like the holiday i don't know i actually kind of like most christmas movies and if they're really bad it's like an extra charm like we need to talk about happiest season <laughs> Maybe we'll get to that yeah. later, but, uh... Yeah. Oh, boy. I haven't seen it. That's, like, that's the very gay recent one, right? The, like, Kristen Stewart one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. I, I made my parents watch it last year with me. Didn't you say your parents were really into it? Um, <laughs> like, no. They said, oh, okay. they were, like, it's just as good as any other holiday movie. Yeah. But, like, it's still not that good. <laughs> gotcha. And it has everything that I would want in a Christmas movie, but it's not that good. What, not that good. How was Kristen Stewart in that one? She's really good. Like, there's something about her. Mm. Je ne sais quoi. 
but oh, I agree. she is I, good. I see the appeal. It's her. not that the acting is bad. It's that like it's still that same trope of like someone's ashamed of being gay and then they have to like yeah. come out to their parents. And it's yeah. like, oh, I'm bringing my girlfriend to Christmas, but like she's just my friend. <laughs> and it's like, okay, like this, t- this is tired. Yeah. It's tired. Heard it. It's boring. I've been there. I've lived that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, I guess I just like watching Christmas movies with my family. It's pretty low key. Nice. What about you? Um, favorite Christmas memories are the the big big gatherings. So I have big family on both sides. Um, like I have uh, four aunts and uncles on my mom's side, and then over the year, like at the most, we had ten aunts and uncles on my dad's side. It was like real big extended family. If everybody, like, if all the cousins were able to join up. So that was interesting. And I think as a kid too, it was like very uncomplicated. But then around like 08, 09, just like as my grandparents got quite ill or my one grandparent got quite ill, there was a lot of like infighting about the will and like they weren't rich. (laughs) And then like basically from that point on, there was just like a split and there were like teams in the family. And then we didn't really have those Christmases as much. Love that that's your favorite Christmas memory. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So like, I think that's why we fought over the gifts. (laughs) Right. And we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit probably, (laughs) but it's like, yeah, I really like big, christmas gatherings because that's just like ingrained in me as like a fun thing to do but i think now that i'm older and like i'm better at communicating i think like we would deal with a lot more stuff um before going into big gatherings again uh so yeah so i don't know so that's like my gold standard of like Mm -hmm. yeah it's really cute having like a lot of kids around and just like doing big presents and we had one of our uncles would always dress up as santa and it was just like Mm -hmm. a different uncle every year i've never had that i've never had anyone in my life dress up as santa yeah it was really cute had two uncles i had one on my mom's side and one on my dad's side so like I, yeah, we have such a small family. It's, it's always, I'm always amazed. 20 first cousins, too. Oh I'm like also a huge family person. No, nice. No, not me. I have no, a did they ever family. get together around holidays, like family reunion things? Too, too many people. Yeah. Not around the holidays, maybe in like the summer or something, but yeah, no, that's too many people. Too many age differences. I'm the youngest out of all of the cousins. Okay. So they're all like 40 something. Yeah. David, I yeah, feel like if you're going to have these really large family gatherings, you must have had one of those moments where like, one of the Christmases was like super ruined, like straight out of a like comedy film from like a pet that was brought over or one of the kids like set something on fire or something like there must have been some drama Christmas where yeah, like, was there? Ooh, that's a really good question. There was no dog that ate the turkey. I honestly like. Nah, like all the memories just get super sad. <laughs> just like my grandpa, just like getting blackout drunk and everyone being like, okay, you got to go to your room now. And then he would just sit in his room and and then like people would come in to check on him and be like, do you want to come out? Like we're opening presents. And then he would say something in Spanish and like, yeah, just didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it's a whole thing. What was his drink of choice? I don't know, actually. I think they always kept that a secret mm-hmm. from us. He seems like a scotch guy or maybe a tequila guy. But so wait, so he yeah. was drinking he the was whole also time, like... but you didn't know what he was drinking? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I knew it enough or I didn't pay attention. Like we weren't very close. He's just like <laughs> crushing palm bays. In the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just drinking really sweet ciders <laughs> and then singing in Spanish. He's like, I remember every Christmas and he's just like, my uncle would ice me with a smearing off ice challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh I kinda wish my family would do that. That'd be hilarious. I would be into that. I mean that's how my family we got like, through the holidays was drinking. It's probably the only thing that kept us like semi, you know, temperate. My family, like, kind of, like, re- like tastefully drinks. I don't know. Like, they'll have, like, a cocktail or two, but no one really, like, gets a little fun, and I wish that they would. Yeah. I yeah. kind of, I'm like, oh, come on, everyone, just one more just, yes. drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spike their drinks this year, Cassidy. Spill like, secrets. just slip them something in all their drinks. <laughs> totally. I will. Um, but, yeah, like, there, I feel like there was a lot of potential, because, like, one of the traditions would be, like, whichever uncle was playing Santa would... Okay, so we had this big, um, we would celebrate at an apartment on maybe like the second or third floor. And then if you look out the window, you can see 
kind of the backyard and um, there's like a parking garage back there. So they would have the Santa climb up onto the parking garage and then uh, pretend to be like having just arrived like with the reindeer <laughs> um, and then like climbing down from the parking garage with like a big thing of presents for all of the cousins. And then mm -hmm. they would call the cousins over and be like, Santa's here, Santa's here. And everyone would like crowd the window and look across um, to see Santa going down. And nobody ever fell off of that garage door. So I think it's all good. <laughs> um, or garage building. there's so building, much potential. I feel like you But told, there's so much potential. You had such yeah. a like, uh, what was that holiday series with the family that got together? And it's like a classic. National Lampoons. Lampoons, yeah. Like you, It feels yeah. like you had the context of a Lampoons Christmas. Yeah, yeah, we've been pretty lucky in that context, but mm -hmm. there was plenty of other kinds of drama <laughs> that I'll get into later. Mm -hmm. um, so, Robert, with as much or as little detail as you want to give, what's like a least favorite holiday memory or something like if you could just cut this out of the holidays, what would you cut out? <laughs> if I could cut my 2020 christmas out of my memories it would have mm -hmm. been great speak for the people robert i yeah. think everybody um, feels that way yeah but yeah and obviously everyone had probably a variant of their crappy one but mine like obviously i had the universal qualities of like small gathering you know like no one could get together i had to have like my test before i went it was very difficult going there all that stuff but I also threw on the combination of, like, recently broke up of a 10-year, also recently broke up of a 1-year, um, you know, like, devastated, completely on my own. It was literally, like, my parents and me on an island with my uncle. As much as I love them, it was just not what I wanted at all. And with all the other, like, drama and then obviously COVID stuff, it was, it was the holiday that I would love to cut from my memory. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you calling me through a lot of that. And I was just like, I was doing my best, <laughs> but I was like, I'm stressed for you, Robert. Holy yep. geez. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, and I never fair. heard. And it was what even worse. I never heard from like my freaking exes. I was like, oh, it was just bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can get into that maybe in a little bit. But like mm -hmm. you and I talked about how like post breakup like especially if you've had some traditions with your ex it's weird how like you don't think about the ex for like weeks but then that tradition comes around mm -hmm. so whether it's the holidays or like mm -hmm. i don't know valentine's day or like the anniversary or it just reminds that. me i once got broken up with on new year's day oh no <laughs> Ugh, i don't like that at was all it like, it's was like it at, like midnight kind of thing or yeah happy new year we're breaking up <laughs> okay maybe it was the day after or something but it was very very close to <laughs> new year now it's fine i can laugh about it but at the time i was like Starting it's a year horrible off. way to start my year yeah. being very very sad yeah absolutely uh how about you cassidy anything that you yeah that was would cut? shitty i would probably <laughs> cut that out um in terms of like i i mentioned this before we started filming but yeah one year um, I brought, oh my God, I think this was the same girlfriend that broke up with me like a week or two later, but I had brought her to like my family's Christmas Eve and my mom introduced her to everyone as my friend. And I was very upset about that. But now like we've moved past it. My mom is like amazing and loves my, my current girlfriend. Um, but that was sad a little bit. Yeah. But it wasn't like, I don't know. Robert sounds worse. <laughs> <laughs> Robert yeah, so depressed. Fine. takes the cake. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> what about you? Um, wow. Uh, You're like, where do I? <laughs> yeah, where do Get I? Get out I the be? list, David. <laughs> the ch I mean, so I think. Okay, so Christmas with my immediate family, I think, was always weird because. We had two members of the family who had birthdays right around Christmas, as well as Christmas. Um, so just like the last week of the year would always be this marathon, mm -hmm. um, which is for a lot of people. But I think as well between these two members of the family, like there was always drama and miscommunication and like belittling and stuff where like there shouldn't have been like one of these people was much older than the other one. And it was just like, can't you just be mature about this instead yeah. of like making every single day Birthday like drama your thing the age of like yeah 25 is like is really petty yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. I think there would always be that sense with this younger person in the family of like the holiday, like just can't enjoy the holidays. Cause yeah. I think this person was also uh, split. Cause like my parents were married before they met each other. So there was also half siblings in this mix. So this person would also have to like leave our family to go celebrate with that other person. And so there was just like, yeah, just yeah. real disjointed feeling um, with a lot of the half siblings, I think. Um, so as like a younger kid, those dynamics were lost on me. Like I think uh, my parents in some ways were good about like not really making us worry about that. And then I think in other ways, like we were hidden from it. Like we were avoiding a conversation, you know? Um, so I think just that over the years just kind of like ground us all down where we were just like, eh, we don't really like, why don't we look forward to seeing each other at the holidays kind of thing? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, Oh, maybe it's cause there's it's all this trauma and like yeah. avoidance around it. Okay. Um, so, and there's a perfect so, yeah. keyword. Open this mm -hmm. to the floor. What was like the family mm -hmm. techniques for avoidance? Like how did they do it? Mine was definitely like alcohol, uh, like drink, and then also have tasks, have like a thing to do is like, oh, go make this thing, go set this out, go like bake a thing, something to be like, let's not deal with what's in the room. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Mine, okay, we didn't really have drama because we didn't invite the whole fam. It's like we mm -hmm. invite the one aunt and uncle that lives close by that we all like really like. Yeah. And it would just be like the two families. So chill. Because if we invited everyone, yeah, it would have been like a shit show. But so it was just yeah. like boundaries, like just the two fams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, that's great. If if like if you really think about it, it's like, yeah, why didn't my family just be yeah. like opt out? Don't invite everyone. <laughs> like, what is the point? Um, the, no. Yeah. Cause I think, yeah, my family was similar, Robert. It would always be like, okay, we'll just plan everything to the nines, always have activities, mm -hmm. like just keep moving. Don't like mm -hmm. have any moments of quiet where someone can like be honest or like say something passive aggressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was just like busy, busy, busy. It really wasn't alcohol that much aside from like that one grandpa. Uh, <laughs> that one <laughs> <you know>? grandpa. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was like last year, I think it really all came to a head when I was just taking on a lot of emotional labor because I was living with family again. And I was just like, I will never do this again. This is the last time I'm going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like future holidays are going to be very different now because mm -hmm. um, boundaries, <laughs> you know? Much um, needed boundaries. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So big picture, like... Why do we think, like, culturally, <laughs> the holidays are so stressful, Robert? If, if you can, like, just, like, pontificate for a second. Yeah, I, I was pontificate. thinking a bit about mm. this. I did pontificate. I did defibrillate. I did um, percolate. Defibrillate? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, I, you know, defibrillate is when you resuscitate <laughs> yourself <laughs> with electricity. Yeah. Uh, I like that. <laughs> I would have to put it at, because um, this kind of came to mind when I was thinking about it, is a absolutely desperate need to maintain the memories of Christmas's past is one of the big reasons. And what I mean by that is that there's so much um, that builds up over the years, right? And it's either from what mark is marketed to you, right? It comes in the form of like, Christmas looks like this. This is what you need to buy. This is how it needs to go. And with every year, you do some element of that, right? You'll have like the perfect tree or the perfect gifts or a lot of gifts or maybe less gifts, um, the outings, the decor of the house, the, uh, you know, like the traditions of that rituals, which I think are good. Yeah, and in you're the stressing mix. me out just listing all those things. I know, I know. And I think those are good to have those, those things in the mix. Like there's some good in there, but it's just like, I think as you build it up and as you try to maintain it and also like hold it, this like ever growing platter of expectations and maintenance of like these holiday memories forward eventually becomes cumbersome. And, and that's, I think a big factor of it. Like eventually you need to change things and you need to alter things because you can't fucking maintain that same Christmas that you knew of your yonder child years. It, the world changes.
That's my thought. Yeah, we're so obsessed. It's like, if we don't all watch Home Alone tonight, we'll die. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Obsessed. I think, like, the financial aspect of it is... I hate it so much, like, getting older, and now I'm, like, stressed. Because some years my parents or my family, we just, like, draw a name out of a hat, and it was, like, great. Just get that one person a present, and I love that. And for whatever reason this year, it's, like, everyone has to get everyone a present, and then I'm also going to my girlfriend's Christmas, and then it's, like, okay, now I'm also getting all these people a present. And it's also my girlfriend's birthday is December 30th, and our anniversary is December 15th. So I'm just, like... Okay, like I like to, you know, celebrate these things, but like I'm not a millionaire. Cassie, did you also have the yep. issue? Like I know my family did that eventually too, where we got to that are like, no more buying for everyone. We all have our own money and we all need to like reduce, reduce. And so we did mm-hmm. like the singular gifts, but there was always typically my mom, but somebody in the family who broke the rules. Even myself sometimes. Yes. I'd be like, yes, I know I have to buy for like person X, but I'm also going to get something small for this person, this person. Like, they're, like yes, I couldn't 100%. stop myself. My sister did it this year mm-hmm. before we even decided. She was like, I already got all of you presents. And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> now I have to buy everyone a present. <laughs> Yeah. Which is fine. I always said, I think that, I think Christmas should be like the Olympics where it's like every four years. Cause then it would be like a big deal. Like we'd actually, it'd be like in the Grinch wow. where they want to really decorate and we'd all yeah. be like, we have to fly home. We have to see our family cause it's every four years. But like every year is kind of a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's too much. Make yeah. it every four years. Yeah. Every five years even. Yeah. Cause like even the countries that run the Olympics, like they go into debt or like they have to save up beforehand and like yeah yeah individuals and then it's like a whole december like bonanza it's like nuts although i do feel kind of bad for people that don't celebrate christmas yeah then they'd have to deal with our shit although that makes that seems better they're like every five years they have to deal with it not like every year being like stop making hallmark movies Yeah, yeah yeah i have tons of friends who always like deal with because they have a different faith or just cultural background so they don't deal with christmas and they're always like it's crammed in their face every year around you know yeah. like pfft, end of october through till like january um yeah and this is something i'm trying to remember that i feel has added to the stress of christmas in general is i know now there's always like the big joke of like christmas in july because like all the stores and that start marketing things and pushing products and that and like ads i don't remember if that was a thing when i was younger like in the 90s and stuff like mm-hmm. that for me and you guys are even younger than me but i like I, I feel like that was a more recent thing and maybe I just blocked it out of my memory, but I feel like that has definitely added to it. If, like the fact that like they've recognized the like kind of um, revenue potential of like if we market this shit even earlier, we'll get people buying earlier and we'll also have Black Friday, the Black Friday plus the like lead up to Christmas where people are like rushing the stores to get in. Plus there's going to be like we'll get the early buyers who are like buying in like October. So yeah i don't know do you remember like do you remember it is it a recent thing or has has like the early christmas been since we were born i don't know because i think i started to notice that too like maybe like the early 2000s maybe mm-hmm. um i just remember hearing what hearing about one family friend who always got her christmas shopping for the following year on black friday or like on boxing day Mm -hmm. um anyway i don't know if it like happened it started happening more or if we just like became older and started realizing capitalism was destroying all of our lives (laughs) present and alive yeah yeah and i think that was the big thing that i realized over the past like couple years like not making as much money for a while where i was just like what is it what does the holidays look like when i don't buy people things like what can i offer and like 2019 i just offered people like a voucher for like a freelance if they needed something for video or photo (laughs) and no one took it but it was something no one took it it. their loss um but then like the following year our family did i think what you're you were talking about of like what you both were talking about of just picking the one person to pick your gift for and do it ahead of time but even then like there was still a little bit of drama like my brother was supposed to give me a gift and just as individuals we planned to do that um the day like after like on christmas or something um 
And then we did this big family group call. So my sister had planned to do all the like individual gifts out. So she like picked the secret Santas all around the circle. And um, we were doing this big Zoom call to do like the present opening and like mm-hmm. everyone reveal who their gift person was. Um, and so my brother just like, it came to be his turn and he was like, oh yeah, my person was David and we talked about it and I'm going to buy him a gift of his choice kind of thing. And then my sister goes, ah, so you ruined Christmas. (laughs) And it was just like, uh, (laughs) because, you know, her feelings were hurt, I guess, that she couldn't watch the like gift unwrapping on Zoom. But it was also just a very overwhelming Zoom call in the first place because there were like eight or nine of us um, all together. And it was just like, it was very chaotic. I won't go into details about my 2020 Christmas. Yeah, the emphasis on presents is annoying. I try to do more experience-based things. Like for this Christmas, I told my dad already because it's his Christmas birthday combo because his birthday's in November. I just got him like connects tickets for both of us so we can just like yeah go to the game. I love that. That's, yeah. that's great. And I think I, it's, it's better. It's, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was thinking about that too. Like I've tried to do over the years, it's not even just this current year, but like previous years really try to go experiential or non-waste-based, right? Like something that like they consume or doesn't collect dust essentially. But what I noticed the problem is for, and is maybe it's because I'm unique in that my family's all over Canada and like now I'm in England, like we're just so spread out that when I try to think of an experience that we can share, I'm like, I literally, there's nothing like I'm there, you know, together, even when I was in Canada, I'm only with them for such a short period of time that I'm just like, what is the experience I can get that we're going to be able to share before I'm gone again? You know, like I couldn't even come up with stuff. So I always ended up defaulting to material possessions because I can leave them behind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause Christmas isn't about the stuff. Home is a feeling, not a place. It's in your heart. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Don't talk to me before I've had my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> on, on your Christmas? mug? We're just saying quotes now. Mug? Oh, sorry, <laughs> fucking mug. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree with both of what you guys touched on of just like Christmas, especially in North America, has just become this like cultural touchstone where so many companies just like build their entire year around the like christmas blowout christmas sales christmas deals like end of the fiscal year like end with a bang all of that stuff and then all of that financial pressure just gets like put out into Mm. the humans (laughs) you know it's something i was thinking about that like might i kind of almost want to ease it because the one thing i can agree with christmas is that i'm like there's a truth to it in that I'm like, it is kind of that one time a year where you be selfless and you buy for somebody else and you give to somebody else. And I'm like, well, it is true that I need to do more of that in some regard because I'm like, I don't gift a lot throughout the year, right? Like I don't, I'm not buying gift and doing special things for family members and friends and that because, you know, like I'm not a birthday gift buyer. I'm like, it's not the kind of thing you think about your, you know, the rest of your year is largely about yourself and about your needs. So that's like the thing I can justify about Christmas. And I think it's one of the motivating factors for me is that I'm just like, oh, fuck, I really should show my appreciation for them in my life. You know, like I do need to do that. So like in a way, if maybe we can like just spread out our giving more so throughout the year and not focus it on this one particular day slash month now, six months later, um, maybe that would make it not so stressful. Totally. I mean, I feel like this is maybe... A weird thought, but like, there should just be like a a love language fluent Christmas. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think like just gifts are not everybody's way of showing appreciation or love. It's certainly not mine. Um, yeah, it's usually words of affirmation and like physical touch. But I'm not gonna like Mine's give words people of massages. Affirmation. I just need my, the gift. They just need to like yeah. just write me just like write me a really nice a letter. Note. That's just like you're really good at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes i don't know something where it's like oh like i can really appreciate that this is how this person gives and this is like a lot for them and then be able to receive that better because it's yeah it's just some people do like material shit though some people are literally like not to drag my sister but (laughs) she's so funny she is so specific with what she likes and she's really Mm -hmm. into like makeup and she will send me the link to like this year, she sent me a link to a Gucci lipstick and was like, I want this one in this like matte finish. Don't get the satin or I'll be upset. <laughs> and it was so, and it was like a $50 Gucci lipstick. And I was like, 
Wow. But also, it's so easy for me because I'm like, that's literally what yeah. she wants. And if I get anything that's not that, she'll be like, what the fuck? So I'm like, easy for me. <laughs> yeah. I just bought the lipstick. Exactly. I'm of two minds about that, where it's like, okay, it's like a slight imposition to be like, okay, well, what if I can't afford that this year? But also, yeah. like, it removes a lot of guesswork. And it's just like, yeah. okay, well, this is a guaranteed exactly. okay gift. <laughs> I asked my mom, I was like, what do I get you? And she was like, a gift card. And I'm like, that's so, like, I, I'd be chill. If someone got me a gift card, I'd be like, great. But some people are like, that's so impersonal. Isn't that like, so funny, cash. though? That's the thing is, like, I love the idea of that. Like, I actually love the idea. Especially yeah, as I, I like older, gift cards, right? too. And you just want to manage your own money. I love the idea of gift cards and, and cash. But when giving, I totally feel like a cheapskate. I feel like there's yeah. zero thought in it. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's the culture it's not personal <laughs> right oh um gosh. all right so we're now at the fun of the show i wanted to play a game called dear santa that i've made up just now <laughs> um, is this kind so of inspired by works. like um the the love letter game yeah yeah a little bit which love letter game <laughs> well the like yeah. one that goes what back and forth kind of I mean, you normally have, like, oh sure 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 one voice. well yeah okay so that's what i was thinking like one of us could pretend to be santa um <laughs> and then and then we'll like yeah we'll address that person when we're asking them for what we want do we want to do that um, sure yeah. i i just want to i just want to ask things of santa <laughs> because i just started thinking about things okay, like cool. what would make my life better <laughs> okay yeah. cool all right, so I'll be Santa for the two of you. <laughs> um, are you starting? With... Are you coughing out of having to give some give some requirements? No, no, no. One of you. Can, I don't even understand what's happening, but I think that's good for the game. I think that yeah. I should mm -hmm. not know. What... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. um, no, don't. <laughs> all right, so so uh, here we go. Hello, little boy. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas this year? Santa. Oh oh oh. <laughs> Santa, I know exactly what I want. I Really? Yes, yes. I realized it today when walking around the city in Christmas times. You want me what to did you realize? You? I realize this, Santa. I gift isn't for me, but I want a gift for the rest of the world. And that oh. gift is speed walking shoes. That sounds very passive aggressive, little yes, boy. Why do you is. want to give them speed walking shoes? I want all the slow walkers in the world to get a set of shoes that when they put them on, it forces them to go faster than their slow asses take them normally. <laughs> so that there is no problems in the streets like the person who stops in front of you, the person who glides sideways as you're walking into your path, or the person who walks five abreast with all their friends, it would force everyone to just go faster and further and keep a regular pace for the whole world. So there'll be no fighting, there'll be no arguments, there are no passive aggressive letter to Santa from young boys. There'll be no need of what I'm doing right now, Santa. Wow. Thank you for being so honest about your Christmas wish. Mm. I will see what I can do. There's still time. Speed it up, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Get off my lap. <laughs> um, now, uh, now this feels really weird. <laughs> now, <laughs> now no, you, little lap. lady. <laughs> what would you like for Christmas? Guten Tag, Santa. Und Santa Claus. For Christmas, may I have a huge chocolate tree? A chocolate tree? Why do you want a chocolate tree this Christmas? I would like a tree so full of chocolate, it takes 30 Volkswagens to make it up for the shape of the tree. Chocolate. That sounds wonderful! Where would you like to place this tree? And I'm so glad you asked. So this tree, I would like it to be placed very gently into my chimney. Would it melt? This is a question for you. Okay, all right. I gotta take some notes for some engineering purposes. I would like dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, and schwefel chocolate. That is a specific German chocolate. I'm sure you will figure it out. Oh, I'm familiar. I'm a Claus. <laughs> um, <gasps> and are we relatives? Dad? What's your last Papa? name? Papa? <laughs> <laughs> I it's am... Me. 
<laughs> DNA test? Oh god. I am Dita Claus. <laughs> D- Dita? Dita? Oh, I wasn't aware that Dita was still alive. Okay. Um, with, okay, so thir- 30 Volkswagens of milk. 30 Volkswagens. Of milk, dark, white, and schwiffel chocolate. Schwiffel. Uh, so, okay, so then the structure would go down the chimney and then the chocolate would come through the front door? Or would the chocolate also... Do I look like a physicist? I am but a young boy. You are but my son. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. I will keep that in mind. There's still time this year. You just might get it. Kisses and hugs. Kisses and Dieter. hugs. <laughs> get off my lap. <laughs> 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 All right. What's to be Santa for me? I'll, I'll be Santa. Okay. Hey. Hi, it's, Santa. Don't speak to me unless I speak to you first. Okay. What do you want? Um, this year for Christmas, I want... Ooh, wow, I didn't even think of something <laughs> while you guys were going. Get this on my year, lap. Uh, wait, 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 no, they can wait. They'll be patient. Um, Who's they? No the one's year, behind you. The the line of people uh, <laughs> in this... <laughs> yeah, what's the You're seeing here? shit, kid. <laughs> Is am I in this Santa's house or is Santa in my house? We're in a sewer. Ah, uh, uh, I'm so happy to be here, Santa. This year for Christmas, I would love if uh, we could. I'm trying to. I'm really debating between being genuine versus Kid, being cheeky. You're really, you're really eating up time. The rats want to turn too. Uh, okay. Um, this year for Christmas, I hope. The economy slows down. Can we do that? Hey, in the sewers, there is no economy. Wow. That one looks hungry. You want that for Christmas? Uh, you can have them. No, I think I'm good. I'm going to get out of the sewer now. Bye, Santa. See you in hell. <laughs> oh! <laughs> See you in Sweet. hell. <laughs> I love the sewer Santa. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, truly wasn't sure if that was going to go in a goofy direction or a sincere I'm direction. I'm just my authentic self. Auth- yeah, that's where Cassidy is at. She was really in her character. This holiday season. I feel that she was I'm, real, I'm either a sewer Santa or a young German boy. <laughs> that's like your two characters. Mm. Sewer like, Santa and mm, German boy. The duality of a lesbian. Wait, this has, yeah, this has <laughs> nothing to do with Christmas, but if you two were on the Snatch game on Drag Race, who would you be? <sighs> Not sure. Ooh, I am not good with impersonation, so I would have to go with like something that is like so iconic it's hard to fuck up. I would do Werner Herzog. Do you know who that is? He's a film director with a really thick German accent. Okay. Um, who's like really, really serious and intense. And the other day, my brother and I were doing impressions of him, and it was really fun. Um, so I'd do that. Do I have to do some of it now? <laughs> now that no, I said that, no. okay. The only voice I can do is like Elmo, but like mm. I don't know that I would want to be Elmo. Yeah, you wouldn't do Miranda Cosgrove. <laughs> I would just be too real. I would be too realistic. <laughs> what I, is she from? Why do I know that name? She's iCarly, and everyone says that I look like her. I don't think I currently look like her, but as a kid, we looked exactly the same. Like oh. it's it's creepy. Oof. So that is my celebrity twin. We also were born ten days apart, and wow. like she was on May fourteenth, I May fourth. Maybe someone either like added a one to her birth certificate or like took away one. Mm. Yeah, separated at birth. So. Um. I would love yeah, no, to I be mean, uh, sound kind of similar. Mommy, mommy <laughs> dearest, like it's such an iconic. Character. Wow, really? Yeah. Wait, what? Like, um, I'm I'm such a bad gay right now. I should know the name. I have to look. Faye this Dunaway's up. character, the witch. I don't think I've seen. Faye Dunaway's character isn't that Mommy Dearest? Uh, is it Faye Dunaway? I think is that so. Who it is? Joan. Cro- oh yes. Yeah. Playing Joan Crawford. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Playing Joan Crawford. Oh, is that the one? It's about a very mentally unstable mom. It's kind of a horror movie. Kind of a, like, psychological And then someone's, like, on the beach at one point. I don't know if someone's on the beach. 
No, you're thinking of Rose. No, whatever no. happened to Baby Jane? Yeah, yes, yeah. that's exactly. Uh, what I'm same actress. About. Okay. So Faye Dunaway. Yes. Uh, plays cool. with uh, what's the other actress's name? I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. Oh my god, we're so <laughs> we're we're Listen, in it now. I wasn't alive. That, I don't know. Joan Crawford is in Baby Jane, and then Faye Dunaway oh, plays right, right, right. Joan Crawford right, in Mommy right, Dearest. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Oh, yeah. Are you trying to wrap this up? And I'm just like, 20 no. questions. <laughs> I love it. I have so many. What's your favorite Christmas movie and why is it Frozen 2? Um, yeah. Why is it Frozen 2? <laughs> <laughs> very pointedly. <laughs> that was a very leading question. Um, mine uh, would probably have to be Muppets Christmas Carol. Um, growing I up. I need to see I watched it. that I last year. It was, it's really good. It's so it's good. Really it's good. just like, I, I'm an 80s kid and I grew up with like stop motion animation stuff. So I love puppet work. I love stop motion. So it's either that or the Rudolph movie, which I also really, really love. I am of... obsessed with the Rudolph movie. Yeah, so good. Like that, that was Rankin and Bass. And Women stuff, can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, the, on. the one reindeer's like paraphrasing. Really? By that. Yeah. Yes, the one reindeer they're like um, she's like my son is missing and he's like women can't go outside yeah. and do yeah, yeah. anything and yeah, you're yeah like, that was the father what? that was a super misogynistic oh, father it's like our misogynistic reindeer wow and, and the like uh the the um oh, gosh the like snow like hunter guy who basically yukon like, cornelius cornelius who basically oh he was he was um he was a uh, searching for gold he was a miner and yes. he basically had like a low grade coke addiction because he always is like yeah. with his little like ice pick <laughs> and then he would like lick the pick and it had white stuff on it and he was always like <laughs> getting tripped out. <laughs> yeah. You have to see it, David. It's so good. Sorry, I have seen the Rudolph one. I just haven't seen it in a long time. Okay. But okay. I've never seen Muppets Christmas Carol. You so should watch it. You should watch I it. I hear it's great. Yeah. Um, how about you, Cassidy? Favorite? Favorite. Um... Is the last holiday? I do really, really like the last there. holiday, but I'm gonna say my favorite might just be like the holiday. What is that movie? It's with Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz, and they like. Yeah, I've never seen that either. Oh, yeah, oh so I really awesome. like that one. It's super cute. They swap places. One's from LA, and one's from uh, yeah. somewhere in England. Small town England. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's cute. I don't know. I think I switch it up every year. I also really like. Yeah, The Grinch. Jim Carrey's The Grinch. Have you seen the new animated Grinch one? So not like no. obviously yeah. the original, but the newer animated no, one. No, I, I don't really like animated movies that much. Oh, okay. I saw it last year. Was it good? Very forgettable. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. None it's, of it stuck to yeah. me. I love the animation style, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very colorful. Yeah, because I really like the Jim Carrey one for... Almost everything except for the look of it. I think it's like one of the ugliest movies. On purpose, um, though. But I, yeah, it must be on purpose because it's supposed to feel. Well, yeah, it's like the Grinch's aesthetic. <laughs> um, I love it. But yeah, it's just like whatever. Jim Carrey's my hero. Um, he's so. He's so good. So good. So good in it. So much sadness behind his eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, he's taken mm-hmm. that out onto the. Canvas. I'm an idiot. Have you? You're seen- an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his art? The guy's like, he's a, a savant. Like he's created all this yeah. art. Uh, in yeah, his he's just gone. He's gone hard in the paint. <laughs> um, <laughs> both about politics, but also like as a job um, or just like hobby. Because like, I mean, what else is there to do? Like, he kind of conquered the film and like movie comedy industry, and then was just like, all right, I'm chilling now. Um, yeah, he's my hero. Uh, my favorite Christmas movie. I mean, The Apartment is really up there. What's that? It's with, um, you know, two actors. Uh, <laughs> it's directed <laughs> oh, by... <that> yeah. <laughs> I forget their names. Um, they... It's directed by Billy Wilder. Um, the leads are a uh, man and a woman. And basically... Shirley McLean and Jack Lemmon. It's from... Thank you. It's from the 60s. Oh, okay. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> it's basically... So Jack Lemmon is kind of like dissatisfied in his workplace and he rents out his apartment to his like co-workers in the business office like it's very vague what he does it's like taxes or something he's it's like large-scale accounting um but he rents out his room to his co-workers so that they can have flings 
uh, mm-hmm. and like affairs without their wives. Um, oh. And so he's just got like a very just kind of like sad job and like <laughs> and sometimes he can't go home. So like he'll come home and someone will be in his house and he'll just be like, OK, well, I'll be back later, I guess. Um, <laughs> While you're fucking and then in meets, my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he meets a I don't know if call girl is the right word. No, that's like an escort type thing, right? Yeah. It's a lady who pushes elevator buttons. <laughs> so, so not a sex worker. No, not a sex worker. She pushes elevator buttons and then that's like... That's her job? That's her job at this like, this tax firm. Um, wow. And uh, the elevator they start hitting it off. common back then. Yeah, ex- elevator operator. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so they hit it off, but it turns out the elevator operator girl really is just like struggling with depression and like they try to like comfort each other and take care of each other um and it's like really really sweet and like surprisingly uh honest (laughs) like for a movie in the 60s that's like kind of a comedy but also this very like bittersweet romance and I don't even know if it takes place around Christmas, honestly. It's just like, it's just say, got a Christmassy Christmas vibe. In the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like really moody and cozy. Um, and then the other one is Carol. Oh, um, how did yeah. I not see <laughs> yeah. that? I know. It, like, I realized as I was talking. What is wrong with my brain? Um, yeah, no, Carol's my number one. I Carol's incredible. Remo- take away everything I said. Edit that out. Carol is number one. I fucking love that movie so much. I have seen it so many times. It's so sexy. Mm-hmm. Who would you rather? Kate. I can't pick. Or Rooney. <gasps> oh, I, I can't wait, either. Wait, wait. Every time I change my mind. Is that the like film that's about like a lesbian love affair that never really happens? In the 60s. Oh, it, no, it happens. Oh, it happens. Oh, it does Don't happen? Don't worry, it okay, So I, I haven't yeah. seen it. But um, I know that like... It's vaguely a Christmas movie. Was, was it, wasn't it the one that Kate McKinnon did like a spoof of on SNL and it's yes. so funny? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. And um, she's just all about her taking off her gloves movie. and stuff and like... Okay, you need to watch it. I think you would like it. It's such a sexy movie, and yeah. uh, the book also. I read the book <gasps> even better than the movie. It is such a horny book. I Ugh. can definitely read that. It's I love really good. I ha- it you can borrow it. Book. I have it. Just like, <laughs> it's a horny book. I remember so reading funny. it in like one day, being like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> is that the That's kind awesome. of book that you yeah. like read under the covers with uh, a flashlight? When yeah, room? like fully. Like, ooh, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> yeah. That's the best. Mm-hmm. Wow. Literally, the two print books on my list now are just like, <laughs> just like feminist erotica. <laughs> um, that's great. I'm happy about that. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Oh. It was uh, Kate Blanchett or Rooney Mara. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kate Blanchett. As I in, I have to choose between them? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm curious what your pick is. To like, is. wait, are we saying like, I know I posted it originally, yeah, but are, are we kill. saying, like, <laughs> well, I'm not going to kill. No, no. No, can't no, kill no, either no, of them. No, 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 no. They can kill me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the question, then. F- fuck or marry? You have to choose, like, Oh, I, I can fuck one, one and marry yeah. the other? Oh, that's yeah. that's nice. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I feel like, marriage-wise, Rooney and I make more sense, because similar age range, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and... That's, I don't know. That's it, I guess. And Kate yeah. kind of, like, intimidates me, so it might be, like, a one wild night. But mm-hmm. then I don't know that I could, like, keep up with it because I'd be kind of like, do you like me the whole time? Mm. <laughs> you always try yeah. to validate yourself. Well, yeah, yourself. I mean, I would be like that with both yeah. of them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, both. I don't think I'm rude. I'm not like, oh, yeah, of course you fucking love me. But, like, <laughs> um, I feel like Kate is too – she's a Gladriel. Like, she's kind of scary. Yeah. 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 Is she tall? Robert, you're the one with yeah, the Google. Can you, can you tell, uh, us? tell us how tall Kate out. Blanchett is? So uh, how old is she? Not that it matters. I would still let her do anything she wanted to me. Right? Yeah. Totally. Even kill me. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I marry both of them and they can both kill yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, I, I'm on the complete same page uh, as... As... Um, Cass, yeah. I when I think about it, I I like I would fuck Kate and marry Rooney for sure, mm-hmm. for the exact same reasons. I would, I would. <laughs> just had a very obnoxious thought. I'm like, I would marry Kate and I would make love to Rooney. I wouldn't yeah. fuck her. <laughs> she's five foot eight. No, I think five foot eight. Oh, wow. so she's Kate. like my height. We're the same yeah. height. 
Ooh, I feel like I wouldn't fuck Kate. Kate would fuck me. Nice. <laughs> That's good too. Be like, okay. <laughs> Whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have that thought with some women where I'm like, strap on? Uh... <laughs> Would would you? Well, that's uh. the thing. I I feel as like a budding at the time closeted gay, uh, the women I was attracted to had very masculine qualities. So I'm sure there's many cases where I was like, they would be, they would be having sex with me. I would not be having sex with them because I was just like in awe of them. Yeah, ain't that the vibe? Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. Uh, <laughs> Um, Who would you fuck or marry? <laughs> Kate or Rooney? Yeah, I love how the please holiday answer, in, the answer in our comments. There'll be a Twitter poll. <laughs> um, Cassidy, what's your takeaway of this episode about the holidays? That I need to go watch Carol again. Boom. Robert, what about you? That I need to watch Carol and that, like, just like time, so too should our expectations of holidays change. Yeah, same. It's going to be a very boundaried holiday this year. Mm -hmm. I even started the conversation super early with my mom. I was like, um, I need to do holidays differently this year. And she was like, yep, (laughs) they are going to be like sick. (laughs) Um, so that's awesome. Yeah. And I've been on the same page with my siblings about it too. Boundaried holidays sound like good holidays. Thank you so much for listening to Tissues of the Day. Um, you can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. You can follow Cassidy at Quesadilla, uh, Cassidy A. Yeah, there's Instagram. some debate around how my handle's pronounced, and I don't know. <laughs> Quesadilla. Um, subscribe to BitButton on YouTube and turn on notifications because we're not just putting podcasts out there. I do edit uh, scripted videos from time to time. Finally, if you love the show, you can always donate at patreon.com slash bitbutton. Are you ready, Robert? Are you ready? Stay wet, internet. H2. Oh. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs>